So I asked her husband, I said, why does she go out the front door? He looked at me and says, she doesn't like you. <laughs> I said, why? He says, well, you're too conservative for her. She's a little bit more liberal. So I'm going to tell you what I did. Now, this is how stupid I am. I would keep my eyes open when I saw her go into the back door. I'd go out the door and run to the front door and catch her and shake her hand. <laughs> and I would make it a special point to tell her, I love you and I'm glad you're here. That's all I would say. Several years after we left that congregation and went back, and who was the first one to come and hug my neck? Who was the first one to come and hug my neck? How wonderful it is that love can transcend even the hardest feelings that we have one toward another. Wives, how many times have you forgiven your husband through love? Husbands, how many times have you forgiven your wife through love? As Christian people, we need to do it continually. The second thing that I, I see in this particular passage of Scripture is the fact that Paul writes and says that our salvation is closer, nearer now than when we first believed. How true that is. And what is our salvation? Our salvation is the coming of Jesus Christ. Our, our salvation is the idea that we as Christian people look forward to the eternity that is there. Timeless time. Timeless time. Salvation, I think, comes in three tenses. Past, we're saved from our sins when we become Christians. Present, we're saved day unto day for the glory of Jesus Christ. And there's a future salvation in which we look forward to in the second coming of Christ. Our salvation is here. But the last two thoughts. Put off. Don't do the works of darkness. Don't do the works of darkness, he says. I'm going to read some scriptures. You were taught that to regard to your former way of life, to put off your old self. To put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. To be made new in the attitude of your mind and to be put on the new self, created and to be like God in true righteousness and glory. How can we love when we're not in Christ? Because he is love. In Colossians, the third chapter, verses 8 through 10, but now you must rid yourself of all these such things as these anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy <coughs> language from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off, off your old self with its practices and put on the new self, which is the renewed the knowledge of the image of God. First Peter, the first, second chapter, we begin with the first verse. Therefore, rid yourself of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander, and of every kind, like newborn babes, create, uh, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by, by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you have tasted that the good Lord is good. And the Galatians, the fifth chapter, the acts of sinful nature are obvious, sexual immorality, and impurity, debauchery, Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambitions, uh, dis dissensions, uh, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I told you, I warned you before, as I did, I warned you as I did before, that those who like this will not in, live like this will not live inherit the kingdom of God. And then after we put these things off, put on the armor of God. Become, put on Christ. Put on Christ. Become a Christian. I've got to share this with you. And I, I want you to be thinking very seriously about what I'm saying. Last Wednesday, my family and I went down to Cincinnati to be able to see the Dead Sea Scrolls. It was a greater experience than what I thought. I thought we'd just go ahead and look around and leave. We've spent over four hours in the display. And we, my kids know I want to go back because we didn't see everything. It was tremendous. We went in and 
Our very first thing was a young man stood, stood up and gave a lecture introducing the Dead Sea Scrolls, telling the history of it and so forth. And then we went in, we saw all kinds of artifacts, uh, things that were there, the history of the Jewish people at that particular time. And we got talking on the way back home that the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered at the beginning of skepticism in the United States. And the idea was, to me, I think God preserved the Dead Sea Scrolls to be able to discover when they were discovered for the express purpose of dispelling for the Christian person the influence of skepticism in their mind. All the Dead Sea Scrolls have done is to prove that what we have as far as the Bible is concerned is right. Is right. God preserved that to be able to strengthen the Christian, to be able to endure the hardships. But something happened. Something happened as we were going down, as we were coming back. I was driving Steve's van, and he had a GPS. I'm very risk back there already laughing. A good GPS. Huh? A good GPS. It's a good GPS. <laughs> It tells you exactly where to go and when to go, where to turn. I got lost going down following the GPS. <laughs> and to make matters worse, I got lost coming back following the GPS. And to make matters worse, Ruth was telling me and she helped me get lost. <laughs> she heard that. <laughs> and the only reason I bring that out, I think the only perfect guide to follow in life is God's Word. I think that the only way that we can find true Christian love is to find Jesus Christ and to follow His way. When we are baptized, we have put on Christ, the Bible says. And by putting on Christ, we become Christ-like in all that we do and say. And when we become Christ-like, we become children of love. Children of love. That we might be able to express our love to each other. It was early in my ministry when I mentioned the Greenford Church a little while ago that I was a little bit sick. I had a sinus problem. And halfway through my sermon, I lost my voice. We still had 15 minutes to go before the service was supposed to be over, but I couldn't continue to preach because I was all choked up. So we sung our invitation hymn, we still had 10 minutes. By that time I had recovered a lot of my vocal abilities. So I told the people, I said, you have 10 minutes. Use the time to talk to each other. And use the time for fellowship. It wasn't long after that they changed the time of the service that we started 15 minutes before the time in order that we might conclude that they might have 10, 15 minutes at the end of the service for fellowship. It was one of the greatest things that ever happened in the church during my ministry. We need to fellowship one with another. I think the time that we have together is precious because here we find the ability to love, to love one another. We're going to be singing our song of invitation, Just As I Am. And as we sing it, I want you to be thinking about the love that you have. Are you Christ-like in your love? Shall we stand as we sing? If anybody needs to make a decision for Christ, we invite you to come. <laughs> Yes, I...